Basically, when I was 17, I wanted a 300ZX twin turbo like more than anything in the world. I wound up getting one in high school. A woman, she was, she was pregnant and she needed to give the car up and get a family sedan. That was her daily, so I got it. And like any 300ZX, it broke all the time. And me being like a broke high school kid, I couldn't afford to fix it all the time. So I just learned how to work on the car myself, learned how like turbo systems worked, you know, broke transmissions in it and learned how to pull the transmissions out myself. I figured out that if you fill the tank with C16 and pull the wastegate lines, it makes a lot of power and doesn't blow the motor. What it eventually blew was the turbos. Finally, it did work and I wound up misshifting the car one night, it popped the motor and I said, I'm gonna rebuild the thing myself and just learn all about cars. If this is, and it was something I loved and something I was passionate about. And I was doing production work for Powerhouse Racing in Fort Worth and I was up there talking to Ross Baird um, when I was up there for a week or whatever and I was saying how I couldn't find a transmission. He goes, I got a brand new one in a box upstairs. And I was like, well, I can't afford it. They're like, you know, eight grand or something right now. He goes, I'll trade you for you paying for material and doing the labor and building a turbo kit for the Viper for that transmission. He goes, I'll let you take the Viper and the transmission today. And I said, cool, let's do it. So I built this like top mount twin 76 42R, you know, Gen 2 Viper with a power glide in it, nine inch caged everything. First pass off the trailer, the car went 770 at 186. And next thing I knew, I had like four other Vipers show up in my shop. And I started doing some research, like going on like Viper Alley and some of the other forums. And it was on the, on the high end performance side, there wasn't really much available at the time. Like Nth Moto was still very private to what they were doing. They always did great work, but I don't think they had a super big presence. It was like one or two cars, but they had more of a very private customer base. Gen 5 just came out. I went out and uh, I bought actually that car. I went to, to my buddy, my buddy used to run Nile Maxwell, put no money down, financed the whole thing and then put the turbo kit on a, on a credit card and prayed for the best and, and here we are today. Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, my name is Andre, I manage Calvo Motorsports. I'm sure by now you guys have seen the interview with uh, Antonio. We're gonna break things up. I'm gonna take you a tour of the shop, see what we've got going on, kind of the process of how we build our twin turbo kits and how you know packages are made. Uh, we also have a special treat for you guys, uh, 2,500 wheel horsepower Viper that we just finished. Uh, we actually have the customer here picking up the car he drove all the way from Arizona. So we'll, we'll take you guys out and uh, kind of get some good footage with that. If you guys wanna come through, I'll kind of show you how everything works here. The cars were just so unbelievably capable, but it was like untapped because they had the stigmatism of being these insane torque monsters that people would wreck all the time. But it, once we started figuring out how well the cars work and the suspension and like you literally sit almost over the back tire, you know, like the back tire is this far from the back of your seat. They just hook really well. The cars will come here, we'll take the motor out, strip everything. Uh, Hector will start grinding out bits and pieces, start mocking up. We have a, a mock-up motor over here that we pretty much put into the car. Uh, while like this car right here, it's, it's an 1800 package. So that motor is currently already getting built. So to save time, we have a full mock-up motor we, we'll put into the car. They start you know, building out the whole turbo kit on the car, intercooler, charge pipes, you know, the whole nine. We made it very easy for everybody. You only have a package to choose from. It's not like an a la carte performance thing. Like, I want this intercooler. No, no, no. Because then each build is gonna be different. We have different packages for different things and, and that's what you get. It makes it easy for billing. It makes it easy for the techs. You want this horsepower? This is what it takes to get there and live. So we, there's no issues with anything. That's 
I think uh, what differentiates us from a lot of the other shops in the country. There's no turbo kit that's alike because just the way Dodge built the Vipers, uh, we found there's always little deviances in either like the chassis or something like that. So every turbo kit is unique to each car. So uh, like I said, 1800 package here. We have another 1800 package here. We have that car on the alignment rack that you guys see. That's the 2500 horsepower one I just mentioned. Cool little story about that car. Um, it's actually the demo car for Dodge. So when the ACR first came out, that's that's the car you've seen in the magazines and everything like that. So fortunately, we made our way over to here um, and now it has 2,500 horsepower. So uh, we'll take a little ride in that in a bit. Those make close to 1,300 wheel on a stock engine. And then the next package is a 1,300X. Um, those make between 14 and 1,430 wheel. Uh, it's basically the same exact as a 1300, but we do pistons, rods, a cam. Those, I think, are some of the most fun street packages because it's not to the point where it's like so insanely fast that like you do a pull and it's over before you know it. They're, they're still like, you know, and, and it, 1400 horsepower, I know, I know a lot of people don't think it's fast. That's a fast car. Our next, our next package up is the 1600. Obviously, it makes 1600 wheel. That has a much more built of an engine you have to either do a sequential or upgraded H pattern transmission. You said that's the car we're gonna go out in. It's a full out build. It's a, it's a CM2000 package. Just the whole nine. Anything you can imagine is pretty much done. Air to water intercooler, twin 76s, uh, it's on E85, quad carbon clutch, sequential, just like pretty much everything that you can do. Nine inch rear, that's that's like the top tier package besides the what the fuck package or fuck the world package, I, I should say. Right now it's uh, the CM uh, FTW, it stands for fuck the world. They make right around 3000 wheel. That car, we're doing a, a nine liter solid roller, high RPM, with twin GT5088 on it with some nitrous. That car is gonna be the first car that gets our first production billet block. So we're gonna see what the blocks handle now. Uh, we know right around 3,000, they're on a, a limited lifespan, so that's why we started the whole billet block project. So we'll see, it's gonna be something interesting. Fortunately, our one customer picking up the 2,500 horsepower Viper graciously, breakfast burritos, uh, for all the text and stuff, so very delicious. Thank you to Ned. You have the people that are like the Porsche, Ferrari, road race guys, right? And they're like, oh, Viper, it's a big, dumb American car or something. And while they're right in some aspects of it, like, you know, the build quality is not the greatest. The, the ACR on the track is unbelievable. You know, for a manually shifted car to do what it does versus like PDK or DCT, you know, Ferraris or Porsches, it's, it's a truly well-engineered car. Once we realized that, we like saw the power of what the, the chassis was capable of, we just kind of went with it. It was like a modern day Supra. Six speed, big engine, rear wheel drive, and it hooks. Like what more could you want? You just lay on it in any gear and it just goes. We're like, this is unbelievable. So typically these three lifts here, they're kind of like the assembly lifts. So once the fabrication gets done, uh, and let's say everything comes back from powder coating, these lifts are used to assemble the car, put the turbo kits on, put the motor in, kind of final completion uh, for everything. So this car here, uh, that's the one that actually won FL2K. This car makes 2,400 horsepower. We delivered to Alex at FL2K, ended up winning the event. So after the event was over, he got a $5,000 check and we kind of jokingly were like, hey, you need air shifted sequential paddles now because it was just a standard sequential. And he was like, you know what, that's a good idea. So now this thing has air shifted sequential. We make like a custom paddle shift setup with our own carbon fiber paddles. Like it, it's all unique to us. So we won FL2K. Uh, we came in first place with Alex Rodriguez's car. He, um, yeah, that was a funny story. So FL2K the year before, he had two cars there, a uh, Lamborghini and a GTR, and we beat both cars. And he came back and he said, I want one. They're cool. I never liked them. 
you guys prove me wrong that they're the, the stigmatism about being these squirrely cars that can't go straight or can't hook and um, we built him it started off as a cm1600 and then at the end of the day it's got like paddle shifted sequential makes 2400 wheel air to water and like just uh, apparently I'm learning this is typical Alex. He like starts here and then he's like, I don't want to ruin the car. And then he ends up up here somewhere. We just finished this diner room maybe back in March. Um, pardon the fan. We have these Dynocom hub dynos. So instead of having, you know, a car being on rollers, now we just strap these hubs uh, to the rear wheels. It's, it's just a better way to test. Um, you can get a lot more like load simulation. You can simulate like actual road conditions and loads and, and drive. So like once the car comes off the dyno, there's not much I have to do in terms of like drivability wise to check and see if like something's off or if something has to get changed. He can pretty much get everything dialed in on the dyno, uh, you know, pretty much first shot. <laughs> That's what I think a lot of the problem is these people store the cars, you know, they, they, they don't like to drive them because they think they're going to devalue them. It's, you know, and it's, it's like, why do you even have it? It's like a girlfriend. You're not going <laughs> to have fun with her, save her for the next guy or something. You know, it's like, dude, go drive your car. Enjoy it. You know, that, that's what they're there for. You're fun, not resale value. If you're worried about resale value, like go into collecting something else, like, you, you know.